Bastard Munchen vs. PXG is literally around the corner. It will be peak for a multitude of reasons. The first reason is because it's probably going to take place in the big stadium inside of the Blue Lock facility where they've held the Blue Lock match against the former Japanese U-20 team as well. What this means is that the match will likely be 90 minutes long, so we could expect this match to last for about 30 to 40 chapters if they were to follow the U-20 match formula. I don't think Kaneshiro would use the big stadium as a reference in chapter 247 for no reason. This would be basic foreshadowing, and I wouldn't see why they wouldn't want the final of the Neo-Egoist League in there instead of a small stratum. The Egoists would be very restricted there otherwise. Such a big event is not worth such a small investment. This would also mean that just like the U-20 match, people can purchase tickets to watch the match. It would be funny to see Itoshi say in there, not gonna lie. The second reason is because of Isagi versus Rin. Rin has been grinding his way through the Neo Egoist League, looking forward to the moment he can finally crush him again and show that he's worthy of number one, like his bid suggests. In chapter 152, we saw Rin reflecting on the match as he was certain that he had beaten Itoshi say in that split second. His offense was keeping up closely with his when he obeyed his instincts of wanting to destroy him completely. He drew out that step of his that he's so good at as well, and then stopped him by a thin margin. However, he doesn't really understand that side of him as it felt new for him, yet nostalgic at the same time. It felt like his veins were dancing. And it seemed that Itoshi Sei knew about that side as well. Those impulses were destructive and liberating as he wondered if Sei always wanted to bring out that ego of his. He felt like he was contradicting himself because he didn't recognize him but Isagi instead. Anyone could tell at a glance that Isagi had gained everything in that match, and rightfully so. He was one step short of something as he must change and become something new so that he could destroy both Sei and Isagi. That was the start of Itoshi Rin's conquest of destroying Isagi. And boy oh boy did we see that he delivered later on in chapter 239 as we literally saw him score a hat trick against Manshine City. And he even told Isagi to prepare himself as he's going to destroy him. That's the determination of someone who is ready to fight. Isagi doesn't have a grudge against Rin, however, as he has better things to worry about like the wild Michael Kaiser. But we know for certain that his ambitions are to become the best in the world and also to become number one in the Neo-Egoist League. So that would make destroying Rin the perfect stepping stone for Isagi towards greatness. The third reason is because of Isagi versus Kaiser. They have been brawling it out for a pretty long time in Bastard Munchen. I wonder what Noah is going to do with the two of them, as the lineup for their match against PXG hasn't been confirmed yet. Noah did warn Kaiser as he asked him to stop obsessing about Isagi that much, but he didn't listen at all. I don't think he will get put on the bench though, as Bastard Munchen needs all the numbers they can have if they want to win against PXG. They are probably going at it again, and Kaiser is going to try and exploit the weakness that he was talking about after the flashback in Chapter 243. Isagi has two major foes to worry about, and the fact that one of them is his own teammate is not a good sign. Kaiser really likes being in Isagi's way as we've seen in his Excuse Me Part 1 and Excuse Me Part 2 when he was rapidly evolving. Isagi's hunger to destroy Kaiser must have decreased a bit, though, as he's basically already proved himself to be able to beat him. Kaiser truly became the clown of his story, but Kaiser can't afford to be humiliated any further as that might destroy his reputation completely. Isagi's worries should be more centered around Rin instead, since he has more to prove to Rin rather than Kaiser. But this battle should be exciting nonetheless. If you're enjoying this video so far, consider subscribing. The fourth reason is because of Rin vs. Shidu. In Chapter 246, Loki recognized that Bastard Munch and their formation is going to be utilizing Kaiser and Isagi. They have two systems coexisting and vying for control over the team. A system that is built from irregularity and abnormality. But in their own matches, they've been alternating every 15 minutes between their Rin and Shidu systems. However, he reckoned that the abnormal one is more interesting. So in other words, PXG will follow Bastard Munchen's lead using Rin and Shidu. They'll also attack with double aces as they create their own irregularity and abnormality. Rin hates Shidu and vice versa, so I'm really excited about how it would play out if they were on the same team once again, as it escalated when those two prodigies were let loose in the third selection. They were even fighting with each other as Isagi stole the goal that should have been one of theirs if they weren't brawling it out in front of the net. Rin feels like he's superior to Shidu, which would be true in terms of specs as Rin fundamentally would be the better striker. However, 
Shidu's hunger should not be ignored as he is going to aim for first place as well, just like Asagi. Shidu's instinctive playstyle should come in handy with the likes of Charles Chevalier on the ball. But who will he side with? Rin or Shidu? I guess there's only one way to find out as the field will intensify for those egoists. The fifth reason would be Kunigami versus Shidu. Kunigami firstly has something to prove. His performance after the wildcard was good at the start, but it watered away later on as his philosophies are just not that effective right now. The reason why it's his mindset that needs fixing is because his specs are pretty much on par with Bastard Munchen, their top dogs, as we've seen after they did that fitness test when Noah introduced himself. Kunigami left that hero ideology of his behind for a more distorted ideology, as he doesn't care about anything anymore. He's the perfect vessel with a broken heart as he can't pretend like he's a hero when he's responsible for destroying a lot of people's dreams. The cruelty of the sport doesn't seem to have sunk in for him as he's in the depths of despair fighting with his own ideologies. And furthermore, Shidu was the one that cast him away as he not only destroyed Ryo in him in Chapter 89, but he also chose Ryo over Kunigami as we've seen in Chapter 94 as he called him a naive hero wannabe which is why he thought that Purple Top Knot was a little more worth it. Someone who can't break himself down will never be able to trigger an explosion. Shidu noticed that there was something wrong with his mentality, which is probably why he told him to break himself down. It's like the willingness to change and the adaptability that Isagi embodies. He couldn't understand what he was lacking, and I believe that he will find the answer once he battles against Shidu. He wasn't able to become the best striker in the world in the way that he was. The sixth reason is Karasu and Zantetsu as we've seen them get subbed in after Loki changed to the Shidu formation in their match against FC Barcha. Karasu stole the ball from Otoya through a sliding and was actually able to link up with Zantetsu as he passed towards him. And Zantetsu passed towards Charles later on. I wonder how much they've both evolved. The first thing I want to see from Karasu is how much his playmaking has evolved as he has a pretty stable core like we've seen in Chapter 98. Isagi noticed that his body was strong, as well as he was getting pressed hard by him, which gave Karasu an advantage over the ball possession. He shifted his center of gravity and had an overwhelming feint which made him burst past Isagi and Shidu with relative ease as he scored a goal after that. The other thing I'd like to see from him is how much his analytical ability has evolved within PXG, as we've seen that Karasu noticed that Isagi was the weak point at that moment in time. He realized that his chances of winning would greatly increase if he were to focus on him in that match. And he was kind of right until Hiori came in to give Isagi advice. His analytical ability goes into detail as well as we've seen in one of Hiori's flashbacks. Karasu noticed that he didn't have that fire around the penalty box when the game was over halfway. Hiori wondered how he figured that out as he continued with giving Hiori some advice. As for Zantetsu, I just want to see how much his dribbling and speed have evolved in PXG. In Chapter 27, we see Zantetsu dashing with Chigiri for the ball as he wins in the short bursts, until Chigiri figures out that he can't keep it up for long and ends up exploiting it by popping the ball a bit further away from him when they were having a sprint battle. I wonder if he still has that weakness, and if he does how much that weakness has shrunk in comparison to before. Watch this video next where I'm going to talk about why Isagi will come out on top in the Neo Egoist League.